Hello everyone, this is David Tangretti at A Fool's Inclination, and this is my video blog for May 6th, 2012. Now, as most of you know, last night was the full moon, and it was what many refer to as a supermoon. That is because the full moon was coincident with the moon's apergee, which is when it's closest to the Earth. So the moon appeared 14% larger than it does at Apogee, so it made for a nice big full moon. Unfortunately, here in Austin, we didn't get to see it because we had a storm roll through, but I guess we're not going to complain because it's always good to get water here. Okay, so the moon, as we all know, orbits around the Earth, and it oscillates between perigee and apogee within that orbit, so within the month. Um, so supermoons are not that rare, um, considering a supermoon could be either a full moon or a new moon that happens during the perigee. Well, if the full moon happens during the perigee part of the orbit, then the new moon is going to be during the apogee part of the orbit. Uh, hold on to that, because when we get to a little bit further into the video blog, you're going to see why that's important. Okay, this year is 2012, as we all know, and I don't know if it's just me because I've been paying attention to things more, or if it's that this year is actually special in terms of more special than usual in terms of the celestial sites that we've been privy to. Last time I did a video blog, I talked a lot about the dance between Venus and Jupiter, which was very easy for all to see in the evening sky um, from day to day. Today I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to show what's happening in the sky, but a lot of this will be sort of beyond what's visible day to day. Uh, partly because a lot of it's happening very close to the sun and when the sun is visible it hides everything around it because its light is just too bright to see. Okay, so here's the cast of characters for today's video blog, and you see the Sun, the Moon, Mercury, Venus, and Jupiter. And the way that they're drawn shows their astrological symbol, as well as a picture of them. And unlike last time, I made a little bit more effort to keep the scale somewhat realistic. Okay, so May 6th, this first slide, you see that Jupiter is above the sun. Now, let's assume that this photo were in the early evening, just before sunset. So you'd be looking west in this picture, and Jupiter would appear to be above or trailing behind the sun. Venus is further up, and Mercury is further down. So Mercury will set first, then the sun, then Jupiter, then Venus. That's how it looks today. Two days from now, you're going to see a slight change. Um, things are getting, are getting closer together. Everything is moving closer to the sun from our vantage. Now, for this video, we're going to pretend that we're in a spaceship and that we are hovering above the Earth, but we're not spinning around the Earth because what we're going to do is we're going to focus solely on the sun and what's happening around it. Now, for us living on the planet, because the planet is spinning, we can only see the changes from one hour of one day to the following day, the same hour. By, be, by pretending that we're in a spaceship hovering above the Earth, then we won't see the sun move at all in the sky. We won't be subject to day and night, and thus we can watch just what's happening with the satellites of the sun and the moon. So on May 10th, advance a little bit further, you can see Jupiter is getting pretty close to the sun from our vantage. On May 11th, it's even closer. And then on May 12th, you see that, that Jupiter is actually right next to the sun. It's passing by the sun on the left-hand side. It will not pass directly behind the sun, but it will pass right alongside it. Advance to May 13th, Jupiter is now in front of the sun. In other words, it is closer to the horizon. Let's advance to May 18th, and notice that Jupiter and Mercury are getting closer and closer together because Mercury's heading 
towards the sun and Jupiter's heading away from the sun. Meanwhile, Venus is very slowly moving towards the sun from our vantage. Now, uh, a note I would like to make is I've shown Venus as a crescent because Venus is now between the Earth and the sun, and that's during its, you know, its crescent phase is when it's between us and the sun, and its full Venus phase is when it's on the far side of the sun, which it was about two months ago, or a month and a half ago. Okay, let's advance to May 19th. Now you see that black circle is the moon. It's the new moon. Because the moon is sitting between us and the sun, there's really no light reflecting off of it. That's why it's drawn in black. And now we advance to May 20th. Now, May 20th is a, is a special day because May 20th is our first eclipse of 2012. Um, it is a solar eclipse, but it is not going to be a total eclipse. And this is because of the apogee. Now, the full moon was during per perigee, so the moon was 14% larger than apogee. At apogee, the moon looks smaller and therefore will not cover the entire disk of the sun. So watch what happens as we advance on the 20th. So we'll start at 7.30, which is right when the 7.30 central daylight time, which is right when the eclipse will begin. By 8 o'clock... We'll have some coverage. By 8.30, it's near total. And at 8.37, the moon will be centered on the disk of the sun. Now, this will only appear this way if you happen to be directly in the path of the total annular eclipse. That path here in the United States, let's see, it'll enter the west coast near the border of California and Oregon, and it'll sweep in a southeast direction. It'll sweep through parts of Nevada, Utah, uh, the southernmost part of Utah, the northernmost part of Arizona. And then as it moves further east, it'll hit through, actually right through Albuquerque, New Mexico. And will even enter the state of Texas, um, just south of the Panhandle. Now, unfortunately, here in Texas, not many of us will get to see it because the sun will set before the annular eclipse would get to reach, let's say, Austin area. So you can see um, on this slide, which shows the annular eclipse at its maximum at 8.37 p.m. Central Daylight Time, the sun will already be past the horizon here in Austin, so we won't get to see it. But if you're in um, Amarillo or La Mesa, Texas, you will get to see uh, the total totality of the annular eclipse just before the sunset. In fact, the sun will set as a ring, as shown here. Okay, advance to 9 p.m. Central Time, and the eclipse starts to wane. And then 9.30, it's almost done. And then we will show on this next slide, May 21st, which is the next day, and you can see the moon has moved away from the sun. Now, interestingly, on the 21st, which is just the very next day, now you have Jupiter and Mercury passing very closely together. In astrology, we would call this a conjunction between Jupiter and Mercury. So we have two consecutive days of conjunction. Uh, the sun-moon eclipse is the conjunction of the sun and the moon in astrological terms. And the very next day, we have the conjunction of Jupiter and Mercury. Now let, let's advance to the 25th. Notice the moon is nowhere near this part of the sky any longer. Then the 26th, and on the 26th, we have another conjunction beginning, which is the conjunction between Mercury and the Sun. Now, Mercury is passing, just the way Jupiter passed behind the Sun from our vantage, Mercury is passing behind the Sun. So Mercury is on the far side of the Sun from us, and it is making its closest pass between the 26th and the 27th. So you see the 26th? It's below the sun, and on the 27th, it's above the sun. Dancing to the 31st of May, the end of the month. Now Mercury is halfway between the sun and Venus from our vantage. And then on June 1st, we have another conjunction between Mercury and Venus. So there's a lot happening in this one small time period. You can see that all of these celestial objects will conjunct as they pass each other. Okay, so June 1st, Venus-Mercury conjunction. 
by June 3rd, now Venus is halfway between Mercury and the Sun. And when we arrive at June 5th, we're going to zoom in because this is a very special event. Now, I spoke of this in the last video blog uh, about a month ago. And now I'm going to show it in a little bit more detail. What you have here is what's called the transit of Venus. Transit of Venus happens in pairs. The last one was in 2004. But the next one will not happen for, I don't know, 130 years from now, roughly. So this is the last transit of Venus that will happen for any of us living today, more than likely. And this is what it's going to look like. Now, here in central daylight time, you'll notice the times are during the day, which is exactly what you would want. So hopefully June 5th will be a sunny day. And anyone who gets, who purchases eclipse glasses will be able to actually see this with the naked eye. So here we show, I, I now show Venus as a black dot because the, Venus is now in between the two of us, so it's sort of just like the new moon was. And we won't actually see it when it's right off of the ring of the sun, but as soon as it passes into the ring of the sun, we will be able to see it as a black dot moving across the face. So on, at 5.30 central time, you can see the, that Venus will enter from the upper right-hand corner of the sun. And... The sun is actually moving up as Venus moves down from our vantage. So at 8.30, Venus will be probably at its roughly its deepest part into the disk. And then by 10.30, it starts to move off the side. And 11.30, the transit is done. But that's a nice long time. So between 4.30 in the afternoon here in the central time zone, all the way, well, we won't get to see it till 11.30 because the sun will set but for the rest of the day, for us, we will see Venus transiting the sun. And if you're on the west coast, where it's two hours earlier, you'll get to see even more of the transit than we do here. East coast, of course, will see one hour less. So these are two very special events. If, if you are lucky enough to be in the path of the annular eclipse, I highly recommend getting a hold of some... Uh, eclipse glasses because you'll have two events to look at. For the rest of us, we'll have the one, the Venus transit, which is very special. Okay, thank you for listening and watching and have a great 36 days with all this excitement happening. Take care.